Hi everyone, Broman Jenkins here. Today I wanted to talk to you about the New York City bailout of 1975. Now it's not something a lot of people know about, and as a matter of fact, it's very poorly covered uh, across the internet and in books. Uh, it took me a very long time to research this uh, to any degree where I would consider this long enough for Let's Learn. So I'm going to kind of jump into it. So in 1974, this kind of started. The Ford administration was trying to deal with massive inflation and unemployment. And we're not talking about the fake inflation that everyone seems to think we're under right now, uh, where it's actually under a 1% inflation rate per year. Uh, we're actually, it was actually, in 1974, it was about 7%. So that's real inflation. Uh, the Ford administration policy towards this was to basically say that inflation was the major problem, uh, not the growing unemployment rate. And so they started a series of taxes on the wealthy, uh, a 5% one-year tax on the wealthy, a, uh, a few different methods to cut the budget, uh, and really a, an all-out aggressive campaign against inflation. And what now seems like a completely terrible idea which is to tell people to stop buying stuff and stop consuming things. Uh, today, we look at the Consumer Confidence Index as a major factor in the strength of the economy, and Ford was actually telling people don't buy stuff. So that gives you an idea of really how unprepared uh, the Ford administration was for the economy. Now, because of the high unemployment rate, because people weren't trading as much on Wall Street because real estate wasn't being sold at such a high rate because of the inflation. New York City started to see a major budget shortfall year over year. And New York City in 1975 was not the New York City we know today. New York City in 1975 could actually support all the law and order and CSI shows we see now uh, just based on the crime. There's reports of people getting into running gunfights on the Jersey Turnpike. Uh, it, it's just, it, go read on it. It's just an insane time in the, uh, the city's history. So, the city was really overextended. And a city the size of New York has demands that smaller towns aren't used to. So, for example, if a town needs money, they'll issue a bond. Now, usually what happens is people in the town or businesses around it will buy into that bond and in 10, 15 years that bond will come due and the town pays that out, but they'll have the money in the short term. Well, New York City is a special case because not only are you buying a bond for New York City within the city, but maybe your pension fund in California is buying bonds in New York City. Maybe uh, a company in Greece or in London are buying New York City bonds. Bonds are incredibly stable. Usually you buy U.S. government bonds because they will pay out. But municipal bonds are, are a very stable thing. And on a place like New York City with such a high-profile city, you're going to sell more bonds. And it's going to affect a wider area if you can't return on those. But you're also going to sell debt deals to banks and to other places, just as the U.S. sells debt now. And New York City had kind of done both of these things. Uh, but at the same time, it had kind of put itself into a corner because it was expanding its citywide social safety net. And it was putting out these incredibly rich contracts to the unions in the city. So this kind of created a massive, massive problem in that New York City was spending way more money than it had coming in. And these bonds were coming due. And they simply didn't have the money through a number of different uh, problems, from lowered tax receipts to uh, the inflation making the, the money they had were almost worthless in some cases. So they realized in about May of 1975 that they would not be able to fund the government for another three months. And a series of steps were taken within the city to get extra funds or find ways to uh, work through this. Similar to how when a company today goes into bankruptcy, they have to find deals with their debtors uh, to minimize how little money is going to be lost by those debtors. 
So in New York's case, they worked with the banks that own short-term debt deals to actually take that exact amount of money in bonds instead, so they wouldn't have to pay it out immediately. They worked with the unions to get a wage and hiring freeze, cut jobs, and cut benefits, and to also get the uh, union pension program to start buying into New York City bonds to give them a little bit more money. Uh, real estate agencies and companies in the city uh, began to pay their year of real estate taxes in advance. So the city had something like $900 million, but they needed more. They need another billion dollars to get through the year by May, and they need $2.3 billion to get through 1976, which simply was not going to happen. Uh, they couldn't sell more debt because no one would buy it, and if they failed, uh, there was a really good chance that the 7% inflation people were seeing was going to go higher, and we would get knocked into possibly a depression if it got worse, uh, simply because with U.S. money uh, or a state like, or a city like New York going bankrupt would probably drive the state to go bankrupt, which would cause other problems throughout the country, which would end up affecting foreign governments and affecting the dollar worldwide. So the Ford administration uh, had basically told the city that they were in no way going to fund the city anymore. Uh, there was no way they were going to get a bailout. And the Secretary of the Treasury had told New York City's uh, officials as much. And Gerald R. Ford actually said directly to the press that there was no chance of a bailout. And uh, the Daily Caller in their next edition, or the New York Daily News, in their next edition uh, put in Ford to City Drop Dead as the headline. So this is obviously a dire time. And by now, we're in November of two, uh, 1975. And Ford goes to a conference in France. And he meets with the French president and the German, uh, West German High Chancellor. Uh, and they explain to him, and I can only imagine like some sort of elementary school or something like that, how the world economy works, and that if New York City fails, then the dollar could very well go through an international crisis. Uh, similar to what we're seeing with the euro today, uh, which is not odd because New York City's in a very Greece-like situation at that point. So Ford comes back and immediately announces a bailout of New York City. Now, this is a massive shift in policy. This is a guy who had been cutting budgets the entire time he was president. Uh, or, well, I was going to say elected president initially, but he was never elected. So he cut massive amounts out of the budget, raised taxes, hoping to increase federal revenues. Uh, he ran a deficit the entire time he was in office. So... This was probably the one really smart move he made in terms of financing, is he gave New York City a bailout. And crisis averted, the dollar didn't lose much more than it already did. Uh, inflation and unemployment would continue, but because New York City was sh uh, shored up, they were able to eventually pay back everything, and uh, the dollar didn't have the massive crisis that people thought it was heading towards, which would really help out with uh, consumer confidence and such. So I hope everyone learned something today. Uh, if you notice, we still have another minute or so left to go on this. But I kind of wanted to talk a bit about the history or, well, where we're going with this. And in that, the Let's Learn has been a lot of fun for me. Uh, I've been posting just a lot of random videos while I researched this, and that was a lot of fun too. Uh, but I was kind of wondering what people thought of the idea of a second channel, where instead of having gameplay video over all this, I would actually, you know, just talk. And there would be no gameplay, it would just be a YouTube channel with just a voice. Uh, video is ending now, bye everyone who's leaving now. So the idea would be just basically a podcast, but on YouTube. I've got no desire to become internet famous from any of this or gain any money ever from it. I just really enjoy it, and I hope people are, are learning things that they didn't know before. Uh, it's not to say that it would occur with any frequency, or uh, you could expect me to 
actually put in more effort than what I do today, which is no script writing, and I do my research at work because I get bored. And I don't know, it's it's been a concept I was toying around with for a little while, uh, but if you guys like it, let me know in the comments or in the thread or anywhere, really. I, I don't care anymore. Uh, so hopefully everyone comes back for the next one, whether that's uh, attached to a Call of Duty video or uh, on its own channel. Bye.